Hi, I'm Teresa Colgate. Welcome to my Michigan studio. It almost always starts with a drawing. For me, that is true. Some artists just go right for it, but I um, sketch every day, almost every day, especially right now. I'm doing a Whimsy 365 uh, challenge and I'm on like day 265, so I have another 100 sketches to go, but I sketch every day and post it on www.teresacogut.com. And a big part of my sketching has been these Whimsy Chicks, which I created <clears throat> a few years back. And I mostly did them with watercolor, or I shouldn't say mostly, I always did them in watercolor with just like a watercolor wash background and like an eight by 10, seven by nine, smaller paintings. And I've been painting in acrylic a lot lately, and I just love the look of acrylic. So I decided, hey, let's, you know, blow these images up and do large paintings with acrylic. And I'm loving this process. It's been so much fun. By the way, this is my third recording voiceover for this video. The first time I used a microphone and it didn't work, and then the next time I did it, I had it on the wrong setting and it didn't work. So I'm telling you, this is just better work because I'm getting tired of doing this. And I don't, I, the last one I did was so good. I mentioned so many great things and I hope that I can do it justice again this time. But anyways, you know, technology is not my strong point. So what I'm doing here is just covering the background. Uh, normally when I paint, like when I paint my angels, I paint the angel face and the hands first and then I move on to the dress and the halo and the wings and then do the background but for whatever reason uh, this is only my third acrylic whimsical painting and I just find it easier to do the background first the background kind of uh, because it takes so long to dry too as the background's drying I'm working on the dog and then I move to you know her face and hair and then I can go back to the background and do another layer because with acrylics and with watercolor you you layer your paint and I like to do a lot of dry brushing so you have to have the underpainting dry uh, in order to paint over it so um sorry about that I hit my easel or my easel I hit my uh tripod with the camera on it a couple times in here so I apologize for that but um the these whimsy chicks are an absolute blast to paint because they're so folksy, so whimsical and fun that I can do crazy things like blue hair, red hair, purple hair, yellow hair, pink hair, you know, um, just whatever color works for the painting. And so her, I'm doing this vibrant red, which I absolutely love. It's, um, it's a golden paint and I don't know how to say it, but I will share it with you. I'll spell it. It's P Y R R O L E red, whatever that is, pyroli or pyrole. I have no idea. I'm probably butchering that name, but anyway, it's a golden uh, matte fluid acrylic. And I've looked for a good red paint for so long and I finally bought this and I just absolutely love it. And I'm using it almost in every painting somewhere in the painting. Um, what I love about this, the way I'm painting these is that I layer the colors. Well, as you, you'll see when I go to do the, the uh, background, but I'm using slightly different colors throughout the background, like just different shades of yellow and green and purple and pink and orange and, you know, whatever color and just um, make it, it makes it look like, um, what do you call it? Pastels. I'm not sure if you're familiar with the look of pastels, but when you do that and you dry brush it, it looks like pastels and it's just really, really pretty. Um, I hit my uh, tripod again there. Sorry. Oh, and I wanted to apologize too, because as I was recording this, my GoPro was full and it shut off. So, um, right as I was starting to paint her dress, it shut off and it takes forever to download. It took like four hours to download everything off my GoPro in order to wipe it clean in order to record again. So I didn't have that kind of time. And you know, when you're in the moment of painting and you just want to get it done and you're, you just, 
enjoying the process so much, I didn't want to interrupt that flow. So I went ahead and finished the painting and just took pictures along the way. And so you can see some of the last steps that I did. <clears throat> As I love watching these speed paintings too, because it just, it's almost hypnotizing. And I think, gosh, you know, wouldn't it be great to be able to paint that fast? But this, this was like an over an hour long tutorial or tutorial, sorry, over an hour long video. And I sped it up like eight times in order to make it reasonable. So it's about 15 minutes long now. So the original sketch was, you know, super small, like maybe four inches by three inches. It was just a small little sketch. And then I blew that up, enlarged it on my copy machine, taped it together, and it was just her and the puppy. And then I decided, you know, what other elements would go along with this scene? And uh, of course, if you have a puppy, you have a home for yourself and that puppy. <laughs> so I thought, oh, a home would be perfect. What, you know, a home is not, a house is not a home without a fur baby. And especially a dog. I am a dog lover. I'm a dog just kind of sewer. <laughs> that makes any sense. But um, I've had a dog since I was six years old and I, they're just the most loyal, faithful, kind, loving friends on this planet. And I'm just grateful that my husband loves dogs too. And um, that, you know, we have a house, you know, that we can have our puppies. I have two. I have Athena, Pitbull, supposedly boxer mix. I don't see any boxer in her, but She's definitely a mix with something. And then our other dog, Daisy, uh, is 12, and she is a lab chow mix. She's got the most beautiful brown fur. And then Athena is just over a year old, so she's pretty, pretty young and energetic. So see what I'm saying as I'm painting this? I'm grabbing a lot of different colors, but they're all in, you know, they're, there's not a lot of contrast in them. So it just, it just flows. And then I love that look. So as I'm painting around it, you can see I'm leaving a little bit of blue in the outline. And the last painting I did, I actually did some sanding. And so you can sand and the colors underneath can show through. I didn't do any sanding on this one though. So I, that first layer of paint on her face and hands just, you know, was a base coat just to get some color down so that the white canvas was not showing through. And then put in a, a lighter coat on while that dries, move on over to the puppy. I don't know if you're an artist or not, but if you are familiar with my work, you will see obviously this is way different than what I normally do. Uh, I've been licensing my work for 20 years and for a good part of those 20 years, it was always watercolor paintings. Smaller, I mean the largest was probably 14 by 16. 13 by 14, something like that, was about the largest I ever painted. And it was always watercolor and with some color pencil and some pastels a little bit here and there. But um, then I, you know, I did some early American art with acrylic. I just wanted a change. And when you paint that long with one media, you know, it's just like I needed a change. I needed a challenge. That's just me, you know, some artists have their certain style and their certain way of painting and they do that their entire career or their entire life or whatever that's fine to each his own but for me anyways I just need change I need challenge and so then I started doing my mixed media angels which have just been super popular and I'm so delighted about that and um but this was a new challenge just something that I like I said I had painted them in watercolor and I just love the paint. I love painting larger and I love painting in acrylic. So I thought, why not try this? And um, I would be truly delighted and happy if my 
uh, if I could get a licensee that would do like stretched canvas wall art or something because I think these lend themselves so much to children's decor I would just be so thrilled so I'd love to see a calendar with these images and so anyways I'm trying to build up a, a nice um, portfolio of this look of the whimsy chicks in the acrylics you know the larger painting the more pastel colors and see where that takes me for licensing. And in case you're watching this and you have no idea what licensing is, it's where you sign a licensing agreement with a manufacturer and that gives them the right to use your art and it's, by, it's you license per design. And they create their products with your art on it and you get paid a royalty on a, like a quarterly basis. So you supply the art, they manufacture the product, sell it, market it, and then you get paid when it ships. So that's art licensing. And like I said, I've been doing that for about 20 years and it's a great way to make a living as an artist. So here I'm, you know, obviously these, I think the red flowers actually look really nice, but I, I want, I didn't want it to compete with her hair color. So, and, and the bird. And so I go back over all of it and just leave her hair red, <clears throat> but I have some of that underpainting of the red showing through in the final piece. So the dog's tongue is red, her hair is red, and it kind of brings your eye into them and their affection for each other. And for her dress, I, what I was going to do is paint her or cover her entire dress with scrapbook paper because I think that would be really cool. I wanted some pattern because it's such a big part of the painting. But because of copyright infringement and the possibility of these images being licensed, I couldn't use scrapbook paper. I know I use scrapbook paper in my angel paintings, but for my angel paintings, I pretty much cover everything with paint. And so only tiny little bits of paper are showing through where this, I wasn't planning on painting over the scrapbook paper. So I decided to just paint some sort of floral pattern over top of it. And I love the way it turned out. It actually uh, is kind of fun because I didn't have a plan. I just started painting flowers, as you'll see towards the end. I really struggled though with her headband and her hair tie and the belt for her dress. I went back and forth from blue to purple. I mean, I changed the color so much, but I like how it finally turned out as well. But that's what is fun about painting is that you just keep working it until you like it. My Wednesday chicks will always have blue shoes in honor of one of my dear friends. I just love this painting because it's summer right now. I love the sun, flowers, birds, outside with my dog. I love it. But the video is about to end. And again, my apologies. So now I just have some still life shots of the painting. So here you can see with her dress purple. So I painted that floral painting just off the cuff. I thought it was way too busy. I didn't like it, so I did a blue wash over top of it, which made it just really toned down, as you can see here. Also, you can see the background really well, and you can see the different colors just weaving in and out of this painting, making it look like pastel. So I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoy painting it and making the video for you. Until next time, take care now. Bye.